What's going on guys? Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets and in this video finally getting around to installing the Vector Off-Road E-Dock. Now we're gonna do an install. It's really not too hard to put in but this thing is gonna make the inside of the Jeep very convenient. So let's get to it. Welcome back. So I'm actually gonna show you guys the finalized product first. Uh, it's installed. The install is extremely simple. Um, definitely doesn't take much skills to do, but it is a little bit tedious. And you'll see that once you keep watching. But as you can tell, I dropped my phone and it's cracked on the selfie screen. So that really sucks. But the Vector E-Dock is in and it looks amazing. So let's hop in here, let's check it out. And if you guys are interested, keep on watching and see what the install entails. So here it is, the Vector E-Dock. And like I said, they do have it for every year JK. Um, the install's a little bit different on each of them, but the basics are there, they're the exact same. It mounts with four brackets right here and here, and uh, ditto on the other side. But it is extremely sturdy, and I'll talk a little bit later about why I went with this opposed to, you know, a roll bar or a roll cage, you know, the sport cages. Um, I'll talk about that here in a minute because I know a lot of people are going to be like, Ben, you should have went ahead and done a roll cage. Um, but that's really not in the plans right now. I will do that eventually. But for now, this is definitely a solution that I've been wanting for a while. Um, so it's a one inch diameter uh, thin bar, pretty lightweight, uh, definitely not designed for impact, but it's great for mounting things. So you can use anything that has a one inch clamp. Um, I'll throw some products in the descriptions so you can check it out. But I'll be able to mount my rugged radio up here instead of having it Velcroed. I can have a phone mount here that comes out right to there. I can have a GoPro mount to actually get some sweet off-road footage that's not shaky. And uh, anything else that I want. Uh, you could do radio clamps, an iPad clamp, GPS, really anything. It really cleans up the interior, especially once you start to get you know, other things mounted up in here. Um, for price, it's only 160 bucks, which is not bad at all. And the install is not very difficult. Um, it does require, you know, a little bit of finagling getting these brackets in. But if you watch the video, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, probably only takes about an hour. But this thing looks good. It's already powder coated black. Came from them powder coated black. I'm sure you could uh, sand it down and paint it a color if you wanted. But, uh, you know, it doesn't really stand out too much. I still need to hide the wires and everything for my rugged radio, but definitely a very neat option to mount things in your Jeep. Um, so for those of you that are going to be like, Ben, why don't you do a roll cage? Um, I really don't want to just do one of the drop in bolt in roll cages. I might, I'm still on the fence on what I want to do with that. Um, but for now I am holding off probably until next year or the year after to do a roll cage. I'd like to do a custom cage at some point. But this is really going to allow me, uh, until then, to mount all my electronics and everything up there. My old phone mount um, just wasn't working anymore. And this is going to let me get some good Go GoPro footage and, you know, declutter the Jeep a lot. Plus, it looks pretty cool. So, if you're interested in these, uh, check out the link in the video description. Um, like I said, 160 bucks, and it really does clean up the look of the Jeep. And after this, I'm going to show you guys how to install it check it out it's really not bad um, anybody can do it you might have to go buy a few tools uh, you know I talk about that later but overall I am definitely satisfied with how it looks and you know overall the function of it is just awesome and it's extremely sturdy for mounting things all right let's go ahead and dive on in the install so the first thing we're gonna do is take off these little tabs there's one here on the passenger side and one on the driver side. So you can get a little screwdriver and pop that off. These are not gonna be reinstalled, but I would you know, recommend keeping them in case you ever wanna put the Jeep back to stock. So we have one here on the passenger side and one over there on the driver side. So now that we have everything clear, we're gonna pop our, uh, our dash tray off, pop it up right in the back there. That, and then pull it forward. Now be careful when you're taking these off because there's a compass heading sensor uh, in here. Pull this up. 
I'm stuck on something down in there. There we go. And I broke it. <laughs> All right. Well, that's just great. Um, so don't do what I did. I just broke the tabs off the compass heading sensor. Um, hopefully my original, uh, the OEM uh, dash tray, I'll figure something out. But so mine was actually caught up in there. It's probably from when I installed this dash tray. So when you're taking it out, be careful. This is the compass he uh, heading sensor I was talking about. Um, but what we are going to do is remove this tray completely and then now see if we have two bolts here. So I only have one. Um, their instructions are online and they tell you that if you only have one screw right here, that you are going to have to, you know, remove the radio a little bit so you can put another bolt in there. So in order to remove the radio uh, and dash on the 2010, pretty simple. We're going to peel back uh, on this lower panel take all four screws and then uh, the uh, the radio screws and then this should pull out. So I'll record it, but I'm not gonna do step-by-step because step there's already a ton of videos on how to remove this uh, center section and radio already on YouTube. So we're gonna get this out and uh, show you how to install these two bolts. Now, if you already have two bolts right here, you go ahead and skip a bunch of the instructions and it makes it a lot easier. Um, but still, this won't be too complicated, but we are gonna have to pull out the radio. So before we start tearing apart the dash, I wanted to show you something. Um, here is where the compass heading sensor, uh, the little plastic uh, inserts were, they broke clean off this uh, rugged ridge uh, console tray. So, I mean, this thing's pretty old, it's a couple years old, it's cold out, uh, so probably just broke right off, it was really brittle. Luckily the factory one still has them in place so I can reuse, um, you know, these. This is good, this is what's gonna replace um, my old one and the Vector uh, E-Dock actually has a tray built into it, so I no longer need this. So if you've already upgraded one like this, hopefully you kept the stock one, uh, but let's pull off the radio. And then we're gonna pop the top one off and gently let this come back a little bit. We don't wanna unplug any of the wires or anything. Um, and I'm actually gonna take a look at my uh, my heater control switch here because that broke on me uh, a while back. So I'm gonna mess around with that later and see if there's not anything I can do, but it does look like it's uh, it's all one piece. I'll have to replace that full thing. But now that we have full access to the radio, um, we don't have to remove it all the way. We simply just have to pull it out. We're not gonna unplug any of the wires or anything, but we are gonna go through and take off those four seven millimeter bolts. All right, so we have everything pulled out and we are gonna have access up here to that second bolt. So I'm gonna go read the instructions, grab the provided hardware and go ahead and get these brackets on. So I went ahead and got one side on to show you what I was talking about before I actually try to set the camera up. Um, this is the bracket we put on and as you can tell, there was the factory screw and the one behind it on mine was missing. Um, pretty common on certain Jeeps. So um, if you have both of them, you're simply gonna remove it and put the bracket on. If you don't have one, that's what I was talking about. You have to pull the radio out. But you're gonna use the longer screw um, that came in the kit and the nut that has a little serrated flange on it. Um, they provide these. If you lose them, which is pretty easy to do back here, um, definitely try not to drop the nut. Um, if you have clumsy hands, put down a towel or something so you don't lose these nuts. If not, you can run up to Home, De Home Depot and uh, you know spend five cents to get a new one. So that's how we're gonna arrange the bracket as well as on this side. The, uh, the little short, the shorter end is gonna go right there and we are gonna screw it down. So I'm gonna set the camera up and try to show you how to uh, you know, get in there and tighten it down. It's pretty easy. It's just a, uh, a Phillips head screwdriver and a 3 8 wrench. Squeeze it down in there. And this is the tricky part, trying not to drop our nut under there. Um, what I found easiest to do is go ahead and get your screwdriver ready to go. We're gonna get our nut and simply snake it under here very gently 
and feel for the bottom side of the bolt. And there we go, found it. And we are gonna try to start this by hand. So we're gonna tighten this all the way down, pretty much as tight as I can by hand, and then go under there with the, uh, the wrench and snug it down. This next part is where the fun starts. So down under these caps uh, that we first removed is a 13 millimeter nut on a pretty long stud. So we are gonna have to remove those without losing those nuts. Um, so Vector Off-Road recommended um, using a magnetic, um, you know, a little magnetic, you know, telescoping magnet and a 13 millimeter a quarter inch drive deep well socket. So what we're gonna do is go down in here, loosen it up, not to the point where it's all the way off the stud. We're just gonna loosen it until it's finger tight at the top of the stud, and then go in and finish off removing it with this magnet and then pull it out. So you can also use a magnetic um, nut driver if you have one of those. Probably be worth it to go grab one, but I'm gonna try to film this. Try not to lose the nut um, if possible. Once again, you can run up to uh, Lowe's or Home Depot if you do lose it, but uh, you're definitely gonna need a quarter inch 13 millimeter because a 3 8 or anything else is gonna be a lot bigger, um, especially once the bracket's in there, trying to tighten it down. Um, so you can run to Walmart or uh, Home Depot and get, you know, get some tools if you don't have them, but let's do this. So we're just gonna loosen it and keep checking it to see how far up the stud. Actually, I can spin it by my finger. That's awesome. Um, so once we spin it to the top of the stud with our finger, actually, if you have small hands, you might be able to reach behind. Um, but I'm gonna do it this way because my hands aren't that small. Get our magnet ready to go. Still have a few more threads. That's pretty close. We're gonna reach in with our magnet and see if we can spin it off like that. So what I'm gonna do is I have the magnet on the nut and my finger behind there turning with it uh, because my magnet was just spinning on the nut. It wasn't actually turning with it, so. This is probably gonna be the hardest part just because you don't wanna lose the nut behind the dash. You know, with my luck, it wouldn't drop to the floorboard, but I think we got it. Um, only one way to find out. No, nope, not yet. There we go. So we got that out. Definitely kind of a pain. Um, we do the same on the passenger side and really try not to lose this guy. So now that we have both of those uh, nuts removed, our next step is to grab these little riser plates that they included. Uh, I covered this up with uh, some tape. So during the reinstallation, I don't scratch up the powder coat. But what we're gonna do is get this hole in the stud in there and then put our new, not the new nut, the reused nut down in there. Um, that's when this magnet is gonna come and help, uh, you know, come handy. It's gonna be hard to get this started in there, but we're gonna do it and then tighten it down. So let's do it. So getting it on there with the magnet and starting it actually helped out a lot. Started the rest by hand and now we're gonna tighten it down. Really was not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. With one side in, uh, we're gonna leave it a little bit loose uh, just so we can go back and tighten it down once we make sure everything is lined up perfectly. So now that all the brackets are in, as you can tell, it is time to test fit the actual E-Dock. Uh, so what we're doing is making sure all of our bolt holes are lining up uh, with the brackets. And now would be the time to go through and adjust any of those brackets if you need to make adjustments. But all mine are lined up. I'm gonna pull this right back off. Pretty nice, lightweight, uh, but still sturdy. But now that it's all, everything's good to go, it is time to reassemble my radio and center uh, dash area, get that all cleaned up, and then put on our new dash support. Uh, just looking at it right there, I am gonna have to use the factory one. My little rugged, uh, rugged ridge one will not work. Um, so I'm gonna have to screw this back into the factory um, dash tray and then put it up there, get everything nice and neat, and then we'll come and finish up the install of the E-Dock. Boom, let's get 
the e doctor. Bolt it in. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. As you can tell, the install was not bad. I am very satisfied with the outcome of it. Uh, check it out in the video description. And I'm also gonna put a bunch of different mounting options for phones, um, tablets, blah, 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 blah. Anything you can think of with a one inch diameter clamp is gonna be able to mount directly on that. Uh, <laughs> really bummed that I cracked my screen right after I finished the uh, install. And as you can tell, that's all blurry. So I'm gonna have to go get a new phone or a new screen, I don't know. but definitely pretty easy to put in and uh, I'm satisfied with it so thanks for watching like always give this a big old thumbs up if you will subscribe to the channel and I have big news for you guys there are two ultimate Dana 44 sitting over there and one of them will be given away to one of you guys for 20 bucks I'm gonna make a video about that here shortly I'm gonna talk about how I got them what they're for and why I am raffling them off and how you can enter so stay tuned for that I'm gonna make a video on telling you guys how to enter it and uh, you know all the rules and everything's gonna be very simple very cheap to enter and I'm trying to keep it under 200 uh, tickets to be sold to win that so that's gonna be sweet stay tuned for that guys and uh, like always keep on jeeping on